we'll come back so we will we would start the scenario 2 discussed in the previous video uh, where we would assume that we have the knowledge of the instantaneous signal to noise ratio at the receiver end that we call rx csi so we have the uh, we have the channel side information available at the receiver only the system model would still remain the same that means you would have a massive W to be transmitted that would get encoded, so an encoder. The output of the encoder would give you a message to be transmitted into the channel. In the channel, you would have a channel gain being multiplied. So let me call it root G sub i. And then additive white Gaussian noise would be added and then you have this C signal it would be demodulated slash detected followed by a decoder which would try to make sense of what was transmitted and we will call it W hat so information at this point we call it Y sub I so this is your received signal so this was the system model discussed earlier as well. But now because we have receiver CSI available, that means we would have another block at the receiver end here that would give us the channel estimate. So the channel estimate would be fed back to the decoder while making the receives. So this is now the system model we are talking about. And uh, so let's try to find out what is the capacity of this channel. So the capacity of this channel, please note that it would be a fixed rate transmission. Why it would be a fixed rate transmission? Because we don't have the, the CSI available at the, at the transmitting end. The, the transmitter cannot adapt its uh, its rate depending upon what the channel state is. Only the receiver can use the channel estimate to decode uh, what's being transmitted. So the encoder has to take care of all the possible uh, fading states or the channel states in order to to come up or devise the encoding mechanism. That, that can that can act for all possible fading states. And if the encoder does that, that means it tries to incorporate all the possible uh, fading states or the states of the channel, then the capacity would simply be equals to uh, summation i, if you we, if are talking about a discrete channel, b log base 2 of 1 plus gamma sub i, and we have to average it out for all the possible state. So this is nothing but the ergodic capacity we discussed earlier. That means in the continuous time, this capacity would be equal to integral from 0 to infinity b log base 2 of 1 plus gamma p gamma of gamma t gamma. However, there should be a lot of care with which this expression should be interpreted. This expression does not mean that you are maintaining this capacity or this information transmission rate when the channel state is gamma. For example, you are not maintaining this rate, you are not transmitting at this rate when the channel is in state gamma i. That is not the case because you are not, you do not have the, the channel side information at the transmitting end. You only have the channel side information at the receiving end. So you cannot adapt your channel channel rate or the transmission rate. So, so this is this is what you can achieve with a, with a rate that that gets designed that takes care of all possible channel states. However, uh, you can see probably probably already that this capacity. does not allow any outage. That means 
no matter what the channel state is, you are you, doing a transmission in that channel state. So this is called capacity without an, any outage. But if you do not allow any outage at all, that would mean that you have to take care of the worst possible channel states as well. And sometimes the worst possible channel states are such that they would really decrease your channel capacity. So you have read out over all possible channel states, those states which are really bad which would hurt you in terms of the capacity, in terms of the maximum data rate that you can transmit over the channel. And hence, there is another notion of the capacity which is called capacity with outage. In capacity with outage, you allow some outage. You say that, okay, I would design my code for gamma min, right? And if gamma min is my uh, minimum signal to noise ratio over which I would carry out my transmission, and if your gamma, your instantaneous signal to noise ratio is less than this gamma main, I would, whatever that is transmit, whatever you have transmitted would get lost. That means you would not be able to decode that information. And you should, in other words, you would be in outage if your gamma is less than gamma main, right? So this means under this condition, what would be your capacity? Your capacity with outage C would be equals to B, log base 2 of 1 plus your gamma min, but that would only happen when you are not in outage. That means that should get multiplied with 1 minus p out or the probability of non-outage. So that is your capacity with outage. So you might think that this capacity with outage is less than your uh, capacity without any outage, but it may or may not be the case. For example, let's assume that uh, you have a very good, very healthy channel on average. Suppose um, that you have a channel with gamma bar equals to 20 dB. It's a healthy signal, healthy signal to noise ratio. Okay? And then you do not allow any outage, a very, very small, small outage. So let's uh, try to find out what happens if the if the channel undergoes relay fading, for example. So under the relay fading, this gamma sub i would have an exponential distribution. You know that already. So we would be able to compute p out as a function of gamma min or we should be able to compute gamma min as a function of p out. So if if you are if you are, have have a relay fading and then you want to compute what is the p outage, then the outage probability for any distribution is typically integral from zero to gamma min p gamma or gamma d gamma. That is, you would integrate your SNR from zero to gamma min over the distribution, and if this distribution is exponential. This implies for Rayleigh fading, your outage probability P out is equals to 1 minus e to the power minus gamma min over gamma bar. So you know this expression. So if you integrate an exponential distribution from zero to gamma min, you would get one minus e to the power minus gamma min over gamma bar. So this is your outage probability in terms of gamma min. So let's try to compute gamma min as a function of p out. So this would imply that e to the power minus gamma min over gamma bar 
is equals to 1 minus P out. And then if we take natural log on both sides, this would mean that minus gamma min over gamma bar is equals to natural log of 1 minus P out. In other words, now we have an expression for gamma min. So if gamma min is nothing but minus gamma bar natural log of 1 minus P out. So this expression we can we can analyze right away by the way. Remember P out would be something between 0 and 1. So this 1 minus P out would be something less than 1 or in the case of 0 outage it would be equals to, equals to 1. So you can see that this natural log depending upon what um, what your P out is, it would be either be very small, it would either be very large, right? Um, and then if this P outage is, for example, point zero 0.01, then 1 minus P out would be 0 0.99. That is a number which is very, um, very close to 1. So you would have a natural log of a number that is close to 1 that would be very close to 0 and then that means your gamma mean also would be very close to 0. That means you're not allowing any outage uh, essentially. And then if this uh, P out and that's a direct burden of the capacity. So let's look at the expression for the uh, for the capacity itself so that we, uh, we know what's happening. So let's write down the expression for the capacity. So your C out, which is the capacity with outage, would be equals to, um, so let's normalize this capacity by B. Right? So, so we don't, um, so suppose that B is constant, so we will be normalizing the capacity by B. That would be log base 2 of 1 plus gamma min. times 1 minus P out. But now we have an expression um, for the gamma min. So your C out by B would be equal to log base 2 of 1 plus the expression of the gamma min was minus gamma, minus gamma bar, natural log of 1 minus P out times 1 minus P out. That is the capacity normalized to the, uh, so that is the normalized capacity that, that we have. Now let's assume that we have two scenarios. Scenario 1 is that we have a, we allow a P outage of 10% and then we have another scenario where we allow a outage of 0 0.01 that is so this is 10% this is 1% what happens to the capacity uh, for these two scenarios so you see out by B that is your normalized capacity when you allow only uh, when you allow an outage of 10% uh, or outage of 0.1, that would be equal to log base 2 of 1 minus gamma bar. By the way, what would be the gamma bar? Remember, we assume that uh, your gamma bar is equal to 20 dBs. So if gamma bar is equal to 20 dBs, then in the linear scale, this gamma bar would be equal to 10 to the power 20 over 10, 10 to the power 2, that would be equal to 100 in the linear scale. So your gamma bar is 100 in the linear scale, so 100 times natural log of 1 minus P out would be equal to 0 0.9. So now you can see that this natural log of 0.9, although 0.9 is a high number, it would, it would still be very small, but it would nevertheless be much higher, it would give you a number much higher, capacity of much higher than what you would have in the case where you have outage probability of 0 0.01. So 
So your C out over B in this scenario would be log base 2 of 1 minus 100 times natural log of 0.99. And this would give you a number which is uh, very close to 1. Very close to zero, sorry, and then you would have a capacity which is really low. So if you compare the C out over B for both scenarios, it turns out the C C out over B in the scenario one is 3.177 bits per second per hertz. And then you compute the C out by B for the second scenario, it turns out to be only 0.993 bits per second per hertz. That means what? That means that increasing your outage probability, that means if you allow outage, uh, of course, one thing that I missed out is that this entire thing must multiply it with 0 0.9 here. This must multiply it with 0 0.99. Right? Although the multiplication factor is much higher here in this scenario, still the C out by B is much lower compared to this scenario because this is 0.9, although this 0.9 is smaller than 0.99, but this log factor take, takes care of a higher capacity that you would achieve and you have a higher outage probability. Remember, this is, this, this is only applicable to a relay feeding with a gamma bar of 20 dBs or gamma bar of 100 in the linear scale. But that's the pattern that you can see sometimes that if you allow some outage, you would have a better capacity compared to when you allow less outage. In your book, you have examples 4.2, solved examples, and example 4.3, which tells you exactly the same thing, in which they, they have a discrete channel with three or four possible states. And then if you, in, if you allow outage uh, of if you, increase, if, you, if you allow more outage, then the capacity is increasing, but that, but that is at a cost, right? So, although the capacity is increased here by allowing an outage of 10%, but that may be too much of an outage. So you, should, you would not want 10% of the time uh, outage in your, in your channel. So that is a design parameter and that is typically also enforced by the telecommunication authorities. That means that if you allow an outage of 10%, that means 1 in 10 times you would have a channel that would not be acceptable and your call would get dropped, you would not get anything 1 in 10 times, that huge, that huge. So, so although you get an increased capacity overall in the system, but that may not be desirable from the system's designer's point of view. And we'll, we'll continue that in the next video.